Welcome to The Crunch with Crib. I'm Jess, and each episode, I'll be talking with some of WA's best real estate agents and business people to find out what makes them tick and what lessons they've learned on their journey to success. Stuart Cox joined the agency as general manager in 2017 and was charged with providing strategic direction for the team, as well as growing its number of higher performing agents. In a market where many are attracting, Stuart has done just that, and he now leads a group of over 140 agents under the company's two brands, The Agency and SLP. We're grateful that Stuart found some time to speak with us on The Crunch about how the WA market compares to the eastern states and where he sees the future of the industry. Stu, welcome to The Crunch. Yep, thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you so much for being here. Um, now, the question that we ask everyone, our very first question to kick things off is how did you get where you are? How did you get your start in real estate? Long story or short story? The long story, um, I started in 1994. Okay. Uh, same place as everybody, rookie, you don't know what you don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had the fortune of working for a pretty good guy that literally told me what to do on a daily basis. And because I didn't know any different, I just did it. Okay. Um, from then on, I sort of did okay. Uh, he gave me a door knocking regime. I listed three properties in six weeks of door knocking. Yeah. First sale came off one of those listings. Um, did okay. Um, decided about 1998 to do my license. Did my license in 98. Okay. Uh, became a branch manager in 99 and started an office in 2000 with a partner, 2002 with a partner. Yeah. And then went from there. Wow. Mm. That was all here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We emigrated in September 1994 and I started in real estate in December 1994. Ah, so brand new country, brand new career. <laughs> Correct. There you go. Correct. And so when um, when did you start with the agency then? So I started with the agency February 2017, okay. um, sort of 26, 27 months ago. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about your role with the agency. Uh, interesting role. It's changed mm-hmm. uh, and I think it will continue to change. Yeah. I initially came on board uh, – to, to really sort of recruit and fine tune things. Okay. Um, company's pretty well set up, um, but I, I could just see when I started that it was an opportunity to take it much further than it was probably going to go at that point in time. Paul mm-hmm. Neodoni is a great guy. He's got some great vision, and we sat down and worked out a plan. Um, so initially, it was all about recruiting. Yeah. Uh, we had a target to recruit. Then it was about tidying up the back end systems, which which were pretty good, but just need a bit of fine tuning. Mm-hmm. Now it's evolved into the whole suite of companies that we operate. So not yeah. a lot of people know that we've got a settlement agency, a finance company, an insurance company, financial planning. And we've we sort of got an organisation we call Club A. Yeah. Which, which the okay. op- with Club A, once we've got a client into that system, we like to think we can offer a f- full range of services. Mm-hmm. And my role is to really educate the reps on the benefits of doing that. Okay. So tell me, um, you obviously recruited really heavily when you, when you came on. Yeah. How did you, um, I guess... Selling real estate and the role that you're in now are very, very different. Mm. Where did you come from and what, you know? Where did I come from where? Like because, in terms of, um, um, I guess, when you came into the agency, what role were you performing before that to kind of get to the stage now where you're definitely, you're in a, an agency but you're not selling real estate? Yeah. So uh, look, when I was with my business partner back to 2002, yep. I was a selling licensee, mm-hmm. realised quite quickly that as a selling licensee, you're probably not going to do the right thing by your business and your office. So I backed off from selling mm-hmm. and we we then decided to recruit quite heavily, um, not only from the point of view of our individual offices, but also point of other offices as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I left that organisation in 2010, um, went into the CEO's role with Harcourts, mm-hmm. which is quite a similar role, just organising structure, um, potentially recruiting new offices. Mm-hmm promoting the benefits of the organisation, uh, went back out of that CEO's role into a shareholder role um, with an office in Jinla and left that in 2016, okay. back in 2016. So, so, yes, predominantly initially a salesperson, but then a licensee, and then uh, um, I'm, I'm a big believer in self-education. Mm-hmm. So put myself through, I've done an MBA, which was to put some formal training behind what you doing a practical point of view. Yep, yeah. You know? Um, and that that now, what floats my boat, if that's the right term, is just seeing people grow. Mm-hmm. Yep, great. So now not a lot of people or some people might not know that the you have two arms of the yes. business. There's the agency and there's SLP. Yeah. You've got 80 
reps currently with the agency? Yeah, 84 today. 84 yeah. today. Yep. You've got 67 with yep. SLP. 67 with SLP, yeah. Okay. And then so what are, what were the challenges of growing those two businesses in, in that early recruitment phase? Um, so SLP was an acquisition, mm-hmm. um, and I'll touch on that after uh, agency. Yeah. The challenges with the agency are recruiting into um, a business that is predominantly a non-office-based business. Yes. Um, we know that. We, we've got systems set up. We, we're a big believer in software and systems. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the people that are with us, when they hear what I'm about to say, We'll scoff and smile. Yeah. Um, some people think we've got too many systems in place, <laughs> but you know, it's our backup. Yeah. Um, you know, we try to be flexible, but the challenges were obviously getting people to see what they can do uh, out of an office environment mm-hmm. when the business is about them. And you know, we we believe you know one of our catch cries is brands don't buy and sell houses; people do. Yes. So we believe that the people are actually our clients. Mm-hmm. So our, our agents are our clients. And then they generate their clients. So mm-hmm. if we look after our clients properly, then the agents should be better equipped to look after their clients. Yeah. So the recruitment really was convincing people that what we do is actually relatively easy to do, but we just don't have an office. Yeah. So because we don't have an office, we tend to not get too many politics. We don't get the water cooler conversations on a Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, we do a lot of uh, group training though, so we yeah. do get people together. Mm-hmm. Um, and my way of trying to encourage the guys is that uh, they get out of it what they put into it. Yeah. And, and that's our business lock, stock and barrel, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no such thing as luck. You, you, the, the harder you work, you know, the more rewards you get. Yeah. Can I ask, um, obviously we've had a few different kind of um, people sitting in this room telling mm. us about their different business models and yeah. there is, um, you know, the very much the agent has their own profile and the business stands behind that and then there is, the business brand is the most important, is the forefront, and yeah. you um, are obviously the, the first of those two. But how do you find how do you find people to fit your business model? What are you looking for in those agents? Because it is very different to not have an office and not yeah, have the support look, of. It's a, a great team. question, and when I speak to people, uh, quite often that that we'd like to recruit, that's one of the things that they even ask. Yeah. You know, why them? Yeah. Um, so we look for people that we think will fit our business culturally. Mm-hmm. We look for people that are well-trained enough and disciplined enough to be able to stand on their own feet. Uh, we, we do provide quite a lot of backup and training. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, it, it, it is a business. You get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. So I, I try and speak to as many people as I can. Um, and not everyone, not everyone even wants to speak about our model. And, yeah. and it, there are people that we do speak to about our model that I don't think would actually fit our model. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, if that, and if I see that, I actually say that to people. Yeah. It's not for everyone. Um, and we're just providing another option in the industry that currently wasn't there or, yeah. or, or perhaps was there, but I don't know, probably wasn't as, as good as we would have liked it to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how do I speak to people? Um, a lot of it comes down to I, I can generally sense within about 15 minutes which way somebody wants to go yeah. and, and whether it's about company backing, company support, whether it's about them building their profile, whether it's about them growing as a person. And it can, you can pick that up in about 10 or 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then depending on that, depends on where the conversation would go. And one of the questions I often ask people is, is what do you expect from us and what, what do you want to actually want to get out of it from us? Mm-hmm. And that, that opens up a whole set of you know, other yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about the culture. And um, I'm interested in hearing, obviously, SLP you mentioned was an acquisition. Yes. I'm interested in hearing how you – do you keep them quite separate because it's hard to bring an existing business culture into a, yeah. another existing business culture yeah. or have you managed to blend the two? Yeah. So, so um, look, SLP is a great company and they're very successful at what they did. Mm-hmm. Um, they just probably weren't structured well enough as a business organisation. So they had some great systems, but they were probably leaking stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an acquisition, like I've said. We saw – a, a pretty strong opportunity to really run two brands in the same marketplace. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly why we took the opportunity. Mm-hmm. SLP is a different brand. Um, again, one of the questions I get asked a lot is which is the better brand? And t- to me, they both got their own merits yeah. and, and they are freestanding brands and we will always keep them as freestanding brands. Mm-hmm. Agency is, is we're a corporate entity. You know, we've got a big, um, organization over east as well 
the branding is tighter. It's more restrictive. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got pretty stri- strict brand guidelines. Um, the certain performance criteria as well, which we ask our guys to, yeah. to perform to. Uh, SLP is run out of WA. Mm-hmm. So we do have people in Queensland, um, but we, produ- we, we are run out of WA. Our base is WA. Um, our support is in WA. Because we have run out of our office here in Milligan Street in WA, we tend to be a bit more flexible with what we do with SLP. Mm-hmm. The other thing is with agency, most of the guys that join the agency want a dedicated marketing area. What, you know, people call it a, a core area, farm area, you know, whichever term you use. Most of the guys join the agency for that reason. Mm-hmm. Most of the guys that join SLP join SLP because we allow them unrestricted marketing areas. Okay. They can work where they like, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're the t- two key fundamentals. One mm-hmm. is SLP is a bit more flexible with branding. Um, we allow some of the guys to do some stuff that we would never allow them to do with agency. Yeah. And vice versa. Um, you know. Do you tend to find that different? Um, there's a different type of agent that is attracted to each different model? Uh, look, no, no. Th- yes, there are. Yeah. Um, there are certain people with the agency that would never want to be with SLP and certain guys with SLP that would never want to be with agency. Mm-hmm. But it comes down to how they operate more than anything else. Yeah. And, and that comes back to what I said about whether they want areas, whether they want type branding. Mm-hmm. A lot of the guys that join agency join agency because they know they've got certain branding guidelines and because we've got support and, and we stick to those branding guidelines. And they also know that the colleagues won't go off those branding guidelines. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, I like that structure. Correct. Yeah, yeah, correct. Whereas the guys that join SLP, they want that flexibility. Mm-hmm. And they want, to, you know, some of the guys do some quirky stuff. Some of the guys do some really slick stuff. Yeah. But SLP offers that, that opportunity to be quirky or slick. Yeah. You know, the choice is really yours. Yeah, okay. You know? Um, so, yeah, look, look, we do keep them very separate for that reason, though. Yeah. You know? Very differentiated. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to hear how much... Um, input, particularly for the agency. You mentioned SLP are run out of WA, yeah. but obviously the agency are not. They're well. You guys have an office here, but <laughs> look, you came I, from I, again. Great question because not everyone understands it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the agency started as the agency partners here in WA in 2014. Okay. It's the old Osnet organisation. L- okay. Loads of people would know the old Osnet organisation. Um, Paul took over. Um, Paul Neodonia mentioned earlier. He took over with a, a vision to create the model that we're in today. Mm-hmm. Um, the guys that came on board over east, uh, predominantly, you know, Matt LaHood left McGrath and brought quite a few people um, with him or a lot of people came with him. They were initially on a licensing agreement. So they, had, they were licensing the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were trading under the agency partners in Western Australia and, and we started the agency as a brand as such over east. Mm-hmm. And I can say this openly, we did it over East because if it went wrong, the impact to what happened in Western Australia wouldn't be that great. Yeah. <laughs> that, you know? yeah. And I don't think anyone would hide that fact. <laughs> the reality of it is what they did over East was really good. Okay. Like the branding's really good. Yeah. You know, and, and that enabled us then to rebrand Western Australia with mm-hmm. a brand that had been tried and tested over East for, you know, six or nine months. Yeah. So the head office is still based here. Mm-hmm. Um, we acquired what was called Top Level, which was the agency over East, early this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're all one entity now. We're all owned by what is now called the agency group, and obviously that's listed on the stock exchange. Okay. So the direction for the company, the strategy, all of that's driven from Perth? Uh, well, I guess it's okay. on the stock exchange now. So that, that's, public um, that's in motion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So how, how we work, so the entities that we run, Mortgage Finance Solutions, Landmark Settlements, you know, Osnet Insurance, all, all the, they're based in WA. Mm-hmm. So that structure won't change. Mm-hmm. What Matt is doing over East, so we've, we've got a, a very strong board now. Uh, Matt is the CEO of the agency. He, Matt's not involved with the other aligned businesses. Okay. He, he just is the CEO of the agency. Yeah. Um, we've got Thomas McGlynn in New South Wales, uh, Peter Kacos in Victoria, myself here. The four of us speak weekly, mm-hmm. um, and we're all we're all sort of real estate people. Yeah. So the conversations are generally based around how we can grow the brand, how we can grow the business, how we can make more sales, how we can train our guys better. Yeah. Um, you know, the higher level stuff then is left to the board, mm-hmm. okay. and that's how a business should run. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So as someone who's speaking on that level to your counterparts all over Australia at the moment, 
how's the WA market comparing or how's it seen at the moment compared to, you know, over there? Again, <laughs> uh, you know, a, a question I get asked all the time by our guys. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really interesting. I was in New South Wales in March and they were talking about numbers of people through properties and you know, one of the guys was talking about a property that was a two-bedroom apartment on the market for sort of $900,000 plus. He was disappointed it only had nine people through an opening for inspection. And I yeah. sat there saying, that's an entire campaign in Western Australia. <laughs> um, look, they, they have been particularly uh, fortunate with the market that they've had. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But they actually acknowledge that. Um, you know, we've dealt with the market we've had. And by us being able to openly communicate the benefits of what they've been able to see and the benefits of what we've been able to see, we think we're pretty well based to address what, what can happen mm -hmm. across the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've spent a lot of time monitoring costs, looking at efficiencies, looking at how we can improve things, where over East, they've spent time just putting deals together because, you know, deals are falling over each other. Yeah. So yeah. as that slows down over East, you know, the input that we can give them about what could happen next and, and what probably will happen next mm -hmm. is invaluable to them. And then our guys can pick up some of the training um, that they've been doing over east, which will revolve around more volumes, more numbers, mm -hmm. how you structure your business. Um, so, you know, I'd like to think we will get it right. And if we do, yeah, be interesting times ahead. You benefit from Correct. the knowledge from, from each of those. Yeah. Um, do you do you think the market here is turning? <laughs> how long it do you think? It definitely turned six or eight weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, when the election was announced, it was like a tap being turned off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, the fundamentals are right for Western Australia. The, yeah. You know, the, the economy is pretty sound. Um, the signals that we're seeing and the underlying trends are, are reasonably sound. Uh, if you want to call it the slide in the market, it's certainly stopped. There's, a, there's, there's definitely more confidence just in the last 10 days. Mm -hmm. um, our guys last weekend were, were saying numbers are, you know, definitely back up again. Yeah. Amazing that a week after an election – people are back out again. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to be uh, a rush. I don't, I, I don't think yeah. anyone's going to be. Slow climb. Yeah. I, look, the biggest thing that our guys talk about and the biggest problem we see is just this general lack of confidence in the property industry, mm -hmm. in the property market. Mm -hmm. um, and until that confidence sort of starts to grow, mm -hmm. that's the biggest problem we've, had, we've got. You yeah. know, and, and Myself and everyone that talks about it say it's got to be a, a great time to buy. Markets as low as it's ever been. You know, I've said 25 years in the industry, I've never seen it this low. Yeah. And I openly say that to all of our guys. You know, yeah. People that can pull through now, you're doing well. Yeah. But confidence is not something we can give people. It's only something no. that they, they can grow themselves. Mm -hmm. So we just need the, the good signals and the good signs to, to, you know, each month it ticks by, something else good happens, something else good happens. I actually think by the end of this year, we will start the fundamentals of the market improving. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can't wait for it, to be honest. <laughs> Come on. Um, how have your guys seen, you know, the last, through the last couple of years? Because obviously you do, you mentioned you have those performance indicators and then, mm. you know, they do have to write a certain amount, I mm. believe, to, to kind of come under the agency yeah. umbrella. So yeah. you do have really high performing yeah. reps working under you. Yeah. Have they... You know, so we've got, I mean, you talk about high performing reps and that's one of the things that I get asked as well. Mm -hmm. um, we also look for aspirational reps. Yeah. You know, so we, we try to provide a platform for aspirational reps as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's been tough. It, it's yeah. been really tough. Yeah. Um, the whole industry in Western Australia is, is struggling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's people that have been around, you know, as long as I have, that are just questioning, you know, when things will change and why we're still doing it. Yeah. And how, yeah so it, it's, it's been particularly tough. So. To get through it, we've had or we've had to do, you know, what we what I refer to as a lot of fireside chats, you know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of just keep doing the same things. Consistency will pull through um, just go back to the basics of what we do. It's a people business, yeah. you know, get back to speaking with your clients um, and let's just keep on plugging away. Mm -hmm. you know? But the last 12 months, you know, Western Australia has been decimated by the award changes. Mm -hmm. um, I think. According to Rewa's figures, registered salespeople are probably down about a thousand yeah. in the last twelve months. Yeah, um, two ways of looking at it: you know, decimated industry or an opportunity for those that are still in it. Mm. 
Yeah. I tend to say it's an opportunity for those that are still in it. <laughs> glass half full, glass yeah. half empty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the on the East Coast, West Coast thing, I wanted to yes. ask you about trends that you've seen. Obviously, yeah. we're moving into a market that will hopefully be a little more like what they've been seeing over there. Yeah. Um, and there's there's been a few trends that we've been noticing in terms of, I guess, maybe team structures and things like that on the East Coast. Yeah. Is there anything that you can pinpoint, um, you know, that you think we might see some changes over here? Look, absolutely. The teams thing, people have been reluctant to do that mm. because obviously committing to a team means you could, you're committing to somebody else's income as well. Yeah. We uh, are working with a model that we've been working with for, for 12 months now about structuring teams to bring people into the industry because mm -hmm. I, I think that's probably the only way that we'll bring new people into the industry, yeah. certainly until the fallout from the award changes settles down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So the team structure is something that A, can provide training to newer people. It can enable stronger people to do more work. Um, how we structure that, though, is fundamental to the success. So someone has to take the lead and someone has to be resp responsible for the others. And we've, we've worked hard on trying to educate our better guys on how to structure that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but teams, I think you'll see, as the market picks up, I think you'll see more teams come back into the industry. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Any other trends that you kind of are keeping your finger on the pulse of in terms of technology, online bu buying platforms, all that kind of? Look, technology, um, the, the whole thing about technology is we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. You know, and it's an interesting concept. I've got 22-year-old kids, and you look at their life, and, and they're probably the first age of people that have seen a whole technology come and go before they were 20 years of age. Yeah. Like, and I'm talking about simple things like a, um, a DVD. Mm -hmm. You know, come, popular, gone. You don't see them anymore. Yeah. So things are changing so quickly. One of the things that we try to do is keep ahead of technology. Mm -hmm. um, we are predominantly software based, so you know we've got a couple of systems that we use a lot. Um, we utilize Microsoft SharePoint's a great tool, so mm -hmm. you, you, we use the Microsoft suite of tools. Uh, that and it was all of our guys to work anywhere. So you know, Perth, Geraldton, you know, yeah. Mandra doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, the next thing of thing, uh, the next round of tools that are coming in, um, property management. We're looking extensively at AI for property management. Mm -hmm. um, there's some tools already that are coming into the industry for property management that we're looking at potentially utilising on the sales front as well. AI in terms of matching um, tenants with properties or scanning pa past history or what kind of AI in terms um, of so this uh, again good question because yeah. you, you look at the benefit to different different parts of the industry yeah. come from different parts of AI. Yeah. So I was, I was actually reading something this morning um, about a conveyancing business in the UK that's actually prompting Alexa to answer conveyancing questions in the UK. Okay. So you think about that. So you've got a Q&A session about what does a real estate agent do, and if you can set up artificial intelligence to go through some Q&As, but ultimately provide a level of service that's not out there currently, mm -hmm. you know, the first company that get that right will, will probably corner that type of person mm -hmm. that is comfortable with AI. Yeah. So you know, it, it could be uh, a whole range of things from, you know, processing basic questions, answers about leases, you, you know, what, what are your entitlements to yeah. offering acceptances to finance approval clauses. Yeah. I don't know how far that could go because that's not my world. <laughs> but I think I, I think over the next five years, we will see some massive changes in that part yeah. of the business. Voice technology is the next big thing, isn't yeah. it? Look, we, so. we've, we've looked at attaching uh, an AI Q&A to our website, but our, our business is sort of high reward and low volume. Mm -hmm. And those type of Q&A AIs really work on this, the, the high volume, low dollar transaction type businesses. Yeah where the questions tend to be quite repetitive. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we don't think at this point in time we could make it work for us, but that doesn't mean we won't stop looking at it. Yeah. You know, the, the, then it's, well, then it's a matter of who gets the – is it the, the business who jumps on first gets the first search result in that regard? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like I if you're that, asking Alexa about something, who gets that result? Is it the agency? Is it – So the, old, the rule of reciprocity, like give to get, you know, mm -hmm. that's been around or, or, or utilised in real estate now for a good 10 years. 
uh, some of the trainers do it really well. You know, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll send out free training information and you know full well that they're doing it because it's going to resonate with somebody and ultimately there's a strong, stronger chance of those people buying that business. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's any different with, with what we've just talked about. Yeah. You know, the, the people that provide free information, free service, you should have some comeback from a client if you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. You know, I might be wrong, but I would say that the people that can provide some free information and become a trusted advisor mm -hmm. will be considered uh, a lot better and higher thought of than people that are just going with old tools. Yeah, well, that's what we're preaching to agents about social media every Correct. day. Correct. So yeah. same principle, yep. different technology, I yep. guess. Um, what are the what are some of the big biggest challenges you can kind of foresee happening, or, or maybe start with what you've some of your biggest challenges since you started the role, and then um, things coming up for you. Since I've started the role, uh, we are a very fast moving company, mm. and you know we're looking at stuff now, sort of two to three years ahead now, yeah, and potentially five years ahead, but we're also dealing with stuff on a daily basis, yeah. Educating our guys how quickly we move is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And, you know, real estate agents uh, can be sort of set in their ways. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, if you look at Western Australia specifically, um, there's not a lot of younger people entered into the industry in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So you're dealing with the advent of technology and it actually scares people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's one of the biggest challenges, mm -hmm. you know, for us to continue to grow in the way we want through, through apps, software, we've actually got to educate our guys that it, there's actually a benefit for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people, I suppose, historically don't like change that much. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a, a business that is changing rapidly and we want to be at the forefront of that, mm -hmm. you know, educating our guys to keep up is a bit of a challenge. And, and look, I'll say, um, a lot of guys love it and a lot of guys are doing it quite well. Mm -hmm. But the speed of change can get a little bit frustrating. Do you think because of your model and the way you're structured, your, um, your speed of change at the agency is faster than previous companies, national companies that you've worked at? Or are you all kind of neck and neck in terms of? Look, we, we can change quicker because we're in, um, centrally owned. Yes. You know, we've got a, a management team. Um, that we can decide if we're going to give something a go, we'll give it a go. Mm -hmm. We also say to the guys, give it a go, give us feedback, and if we get it wrong, we'll change it. Mm -hmm. And then there's, there's a number of things that we think we've possibly done that with already where we've, we've actually got it wrong and we've rolled it back because we got it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's key to what we do. But in the organisation that's centrally owned, we can actually do that. Mm -hmm. you know, we've not got layers of management. We've not got layers of, of ownership where it has to filter down and, and everybody has to be on board before it'll filter down. Yeah. So we can make decisions quite quickly. We can implement things quite quickly and we can change them if we get it wrong quite quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the last thing I wanted to ask you about is, that, I guess, the future of the industry. You were, you were touching on yeah. people coming in and um, I spoke about this with someone last week and I wondered what your thoughts were on newcomers to the industry from my, um, I guess, experience i think most agents seem to be it's their second or third career yeah and they are um you know it's not it's not a career that people think about when they're leaving school or anything like that mm. a why do you think that is and b do you think that's something would you be looking to change that or is it important people have that life experience to be trusted with someone's house it's interesting isn't it um you know you look at a real estate agent in their 20s and people say do they actually know what they're doing yeah um you know I, I started in my twenties mm -hmm. and I remember walking to a couple of houses and, and like people had a shocked look on their face and going, ah, we, we were expecting <laughs> somebody a little bit older. Pre Where's your boss? Pre-colour <laughs> photographs and all that sort of stuff. Pre-internet. Pre um, so it, yeah, look, you, you say it's a second or third career. I actually think that uh, we need to get it to the point where by doing teams, traineeships, looking at different ways of bringing people in the industry, mm -hmm. it actually needs to be considered as a genuine career. Yeah. Um, it, it's harsh to say to people that it, it, it's your second or third career because it sort of infers that you didn't like the first or the second or you weren't very good at the first or the second. 
Um, and, and I don't think that's the case. No. And I think a lot of the people that I see that have done incredibly well at this industry have done well because they've treated it as a career mm-hmm. in the same way as you would any other career. Yeah. And when you treat it as a career and you work hard at it and you look at, you know, uh, constant improvement and, and you know, training and how you can actually get better, it is a great industry. Mm-hmm. Our challenge now is literally how we bring young people into it or, or, or not even necessarily young people but new people. Is that your responsibility or is it the industry bodies or is it a collective oh, look, push? The, the, industry bodies, um, I don't think the industry should rely on industry bodies mm-hmm. to bring people into the industry. Mm-hmm. I think we, as the industry, I think we've got to do it. And you look at the, the average age of the people in the industry, um, it is ageing in Western Australia. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the things that I find actually quite exciting when I do travel over east. They do bring young blood in. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose the market being good has enabled that. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, you know, back to the comment I made earlier about the property, the two-bedroom apartment in Sydney that was on the market for 900 grand. Yeah. You know, that level of pricing generates a much higher level of fees, which mm-hmm. means that you can do more with the people around you. Yeah. But I think we as an industry and, and the business owners need to take the lead uh, and look at how we bring new people into the industry, how we educate them, traineeships. Um, the award is, is hampering things, but at the end of the day, that's about providing a minimum income. Mm-hmm. So, you know, one of the things that m- might need to be considered by business owners is, do we just bring people in and actually give them a specific role to do and pay them the award rate? Yeah. And, and, and to say, look, this, this is what you're going to earn as a trainee for the first 12 months. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you come out of it, there'll be a job at the end of it. Yeah. Other industries do it. Uh, property management has done it, you know, historically over the last sort of 20 years. Mm-hmm. We perhaps need to come up with a model it on the works. sales side of it where teams, you know, we, we've looked at... We, Various ideas. We've looked at bringing on people on salaries as floaters to help out our top people. I was going to say, how would you pick uh, with your yep. model? Yep. Would you pick your top performing teams and uh, so, assign them? Or? Yeah, potentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also looking at how we train them, how we administer what they do. Um, most organisations, anyone that's been new into an organisation, the training that they get as an individual would have been driven by the person that's owned the office. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a different way to that. Yeah. You know, so what we're looking at is we, we've got uh, an operations manager, you know, we've got other heads of departments, we've got a head of department of property management, we've got a number of people with licenses. The training of a salesperson shouldn't be based from one person giving them their opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're looking at if we do bring people in a spectrum of training and how we actually educate them properly mm-hmm. and not just leaving them and saying, this is what you generally do, and this is how you go about generating business. Yeah, like their job is to shadow and mirror somebody, mm-hmm. as, as opposed to trying to generate their own business from a cold start. Yeah, and well, then think, hopefully your dropout rate is going to significantly correct. reduce. Correct. Yeah. So. Yeah. But we all know that the problem with doing that historically for the last five years has just been the market's been that bad. No, yeah. one, no one has, has yeah, had the spare it. money to take the punt. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's the sad part about what's happened here mm-hmm. is that. The new people that we've seen entering the industry is almost non-existent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the award was, you know, necessary in terms of people need a minimum wage, but possibly badly timed. Oh, yeah. look, the 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 impact of the award over east has been almost zero. Yes. You know, our, our guys sort of laugh when I talk about it. Yeah. Um, I think over east we did have some casualties through the award over east, but not anything like as we've seen in Western Australia. Yeah. Um. The downside of it is there are people that have done this career particularly well for a lifestyle career, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, not not literally to drive high incomes, but because it's been a choice. Mm-hmm. That's that's gone now, mm-hmm. and unless someone can figure out a way of getting around it. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the ward, but as an employer, we just have to deal with it. Yeah. So how we're dealing with it is the best way we can. Mm-hmm. And we're looking at how we can then create options to bring in new people based around the award. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them, like I say, trainees. Um, I mean, there's talk in the industry and chatter in the industry that the reps registration is likely to alter next year. 
Okay. And the licenses requirements, the educational requirements for the license will alter next year. If that happens, getting into the industry is going to be even harder. Mm-hmm. You know, they're talking about lifting the educational requirements in Western Australia. Yeah. Your reps registration. Yeah. If that happens, that will, I think that will put the industry's growth on hold for probably another three or four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that would be a really bad thing for the industry personally. Yeah. You know? Is there an element of, um, I guess, the, the people that are leaving, are, you know, it, it's almost better the cream rises to the top at the moment because, in a, you know, I guess in a really strong market, anyone can be a real estate agent and that maybe lends itself to the bad, the bad rep that the industry has mm. and all of those things. So yeah. is there an element of that, do you think? Or? Look, talking about the industry in general, you know, every time we come up as, as one of the least trusted people, mm-hmm. you know. Apparently. You know, I talk about it and go, Unfortunately, if you bank with a bank and you have an argument with a bank teller, it's not the person behind the counter that you're arguing with, it's the organisation. Mm. We get tired with the same brush, but because we're generally dealing with people's biggest assets, it impacts us really harsh. Mm-hmm. And in all the length of time I've done it, you know, the, the vast majority of people that I've seen in the industry actually do care about what they do with people and, and they actually genuinely do the right thing by people. Yeah. But life's not a bed of roses, and sometimes you know things go do go astray. Mm-hmm. So it's also yeah. an a, an area that people outside the industry don't know anything about. Correct. So it's very easy to say, "Well, I was screwed over by my real estate agent yeah. because you don't have the education to understand what actually yeah. happened." Yeah. I think. And a lot of people don't understand the legislation that we're bound by. Sometimes restricts us from doing things. Mm-hmm. You know, not that we've seen this for a long time, but a classic case is when you should be getting multiple offers on properties. And guys used to just say to you, just tell me the price I need to beat the other offer with. And we go, we can't do that. Can't, yeah. <laughs> you know? So that caused angst. Um, you know, the classic case now, uh, which has been for probably the last seven or eight years, is negative equity. Mm-hmm. And you're dealing with people that, that are saying, I can't sell it for that price. And we try and provide options as to ways around that and, and you know, help people move forward. And quite often it comes back that you know, we've done the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't you genuinely don't you know, no. we do this to help people not to hinder people and mm-hmm. um, it's a profession that people choose and I even don't know why we ended up going down that line of conversation <laughs> from the original question um, but most but, but most people I see genuinely try and do the right thing by people yeah you know? yeah um, but that wasn't the original question was it no but we we, we veered off track that's okay <laughs> Um, look, Stuart, I, that was my last question. Yeah, okay. We veered, we veered, but that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And, um, yeah, great, great chat. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. We'd love any feedback or guest suggestions. So hit me up on Instagram. You can find me on Jess at Crib. And if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe and be sure to tell a friend.